Commissioning of Bola Tinubu Drive and Airport to Gate by His Excellency Bola Hamed Tinubu G.C. Ever, President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, this 15th day of January 2024. To God be the glory. Hello, guys, welcome to the show. How are you today? I hope everyone is doing just fine. So um, let's run along with some of the major stories making the headlines across Africa. And today we are going to be starting from Nigeria. Let's get to it. Nigeria, mass kidnappings returns to Abuja. Yeah, <laughs> this is... This is trouble. This is really trouble. I have mentioned like a thousand times on this particular platform about the insecurity nature in Nigeria. I can, and I cannot wrap my head around why security concerns seems to be the number one problem in Nigeria. No one is safe anymore. You know, at first, we used to talk about Poverty and starvation being a major problem. At least that was for the poor, you know. They could cry out poverty. They could starve, you know. But the rich had no problem with that. But kidnappings and insecurity and the suicide bumping is something that nobody is safe from. Both the rich and the poor. They all fall victims to this. So let's continue. Kidnappings and killings have returned to Nigeria's federal capital, Abuja. After over 10 months of silence from the bandits, bandits last week attacked travelers on the Abuja-Kaduna Highway and uh, adopted over 30 people. Witnesses and the community leaders said the adoption took place at Dongong Philly near Katari along the Kaduna-Abuja Highway in Kachi, local government area of Kaduna State. This is the first time in more than 10 months when the security along the road, artillery, was breached. Also, 10 persons were kidnapped in the Dusi al haji area of the FTC Abuja, after gunmen reportedly dressed as military men invaded the community. According to eyewitnesses, the kidnappers dressed like herders invaded the estate in the evening around 7.30 p.m. The unfortunate incidents in the areas bringing to the fore the disconcerting reality that kidnappings often orchestrated by individuals donning military uniforms persist despite official denies from the police. This is a very serious problem. Like I have mentioned many, many times before, Nigeria has a serious problem of insecurity. If there's one thing that anyone, both the rich and the poor, feared for in Nigeria, is insecurity. In fact, it is the most insecure country in Africa. It's so, so unsafe. There are kidnappers here and there. If you're not being careful, <laughs> before you know, you'll be kidnapped. But let's move on to the second story of the day. Nigerian leader says, Massive education of youth will help end kidnappings threatening the capital. Yeah, <laughs> education will solve the problem. <laughs> I don't know who advises these leaders. I don't know who um, Tinobo Ahmed's 
Bola advisors are. For them to advise him to think that education alone was going to solve the problem of kidnappings is such a laughable thing. Because remember, if the poor people are abandoned to themselves, if the commoners have no hope of a better future, they will resort to things like this. You know, the, the politicians and the rich people have stolen everything from the common people. I'm not just playing the blaming game, but it's a reality. Rich people have good security. Their children study abroad. They have bulletproof cars. They live in rich and wealthy communities with so much security. What about the poor? What about the common people? No one cares about them. No one even worries about them. So, just educating the youth alone won't solve the problem. Creating more jobs for the youth is going to solve the problem. Making sure that the youth have something to do will go a long way in addressing the problem of insecurity in the country. Making sure that people who finish school, people who graduate from vocational schools or general, education, uh, general educational schools have something to do. They don't come back home and start lottery around. If you can do that, then it's going to reduce the rate of crimes and criminality drastically. But let's continue with the article. Nigeria's leader said Tuesday that his government will embark on massive education of youth as one way to tackle the increasing kidnappings for ransom now threatening the capital city along with the rest of the country's conflict hit north. President Bola Amer won last year's election after promising to rid the West African nation of its security crisis. However, deadly attacks, particularly in the north, have persisted, with the capital of Abuja recording a spike in adoptions along major roads and in homes in recent weeks. Tinobo condemned the adoptions as disturbing, ungodly, and sinister and toward education as the antidote to the troubles agitating the nation, according to a statement from presidential spokesman. Well, education alone will not solve the problem. And uh, Mr. Tinobu, using big words like disturbing, ungodly, and sinister, is not going to help solve the problem. Because I'm guessing Mr. Tinobu has eaten until he is full. I'm guessing his family members have all eaten. I'm guessing his children maybe are in abroad or those that are in Nigeria have good jobs or good businesses or even if they are just too lazy to do anything, they have so much money saved for them by their father. So they need not worry about any single thing. But for the rest of us, the rest of us, the common people, we have nothing. We do not know what we are gonna eat. We do not know what we are gonna, where we are gonna sleep, or what to do. I am not saying that criminal activities are the best way to go. I am not saying that criminality should be the best thing to do. No, that's not what I'm saying. I am mainly laying out the facts. Until you do something to help and support people who are struggling, they will do whatever it takes to support themselves. Survivor is a human instinct, and people will do whatever it takes for them to survive. It doesn't matter how sinister, how ungodly, or how disturbing, as Mr. Tinobu puts it, the thing is, but let's move on 
to our next story for the day. Share to exit Nigeria's trouble onshore or oh yeah after nearly a century. Yeah, share have decided to pull out from Nigeria because they can no longer cope. <laughs> it looks like the whole the whole Nigeria is kind of having from it's kind of having one trouble to another because it's not just terrorism in the north or kidnappings around Abuja. We, we also have Oye Tevri in the Oye Rich states. Sure is said to conclude nearly a century of operations in Nigeria onshore Oye and gas after agreeing to sell its subsidiary there to a consortium of five mostly local companies for up to 2.4 billion. The British energy giant pioneered Nigeria's oil and gas business beginning in the 1930s. It has struggled for years with hundreds of onshore oil spill as a result of theft, sabotage, and operational issues that led to costly repairs and high profit lawsuits. The British major will sell the share petroleum development company of Nigerian Limited for a consideration of 1.3 billion, it said in a statement, while the buyers will make an additional payment of up to 1.1 billion relating to prior receivables, receivables at completion. This agreement marks an important milestone for Shell in Nigeria, aligning with our previously announced intent to exit onshore oil production in the Delta region, simplifying our portfolio and focusing future discipline investment in Nigeria on our deep water and integrated gas position. They are pulling out of Nigeria. <laughs> that tells you how difficult things have been for them. And listen, the illegal oil mining in Nigeria is a very, very huge industry. And for some reason, the government have kind of like let it just thrive and uh, move ahead, you know? I think that both the government officials and the local officials in the area have a take in this because they know about this for many years, but for some reason, they kind of just like give a blind eye to it. And I also, on the other hand, wouldn't blame the people, right? Because these petroleum companies or petroleum uh, uh, exploiters pay huge sums of bribe to government officials. So the government officials are well taken care of and the common people are just abandoned to themselves. So what choice do they have than to fend for themselves? So can you really blame them? So Shell, pull out. <laughs> it wouldn't make any difference because even when you were there, I am guessing the people in Delta State did not really felt anything. So your pulling out wouldn't make any difference. <laughs> but you know what? Let's move on to the next story of the day. 